So my name is N.T. Zhang. I'm the um, I'm from Hong Kong. Um, first of all, I'm I'm gonna have to apologize in, in advance because you know we we aren't part of the conversation in Hong Kong on this topic. Um, we don't really have we don't seem to have the same issue uh, and um, of um, you know this the burnout due to documentation burden that that problem is is not you know something on our agenda. But I'll, maybe you'll hear why when I go through this talk. Um, and also, I'm going to confuse you because the name of our system is the CMS. We, we have a, our system called the Clinical Management System, CMS for short. And I know that clashes with your CMS, but uh, I'm afraid I, I'm going to use the word CMS when I talk about our system. So I'm the, um, the head of IT and health informatics uh, at the Hospital Authority. Um, I think this is relevant because it's like, let's say if you had the, the CEO of um, Epic, Judy Faulkner worked for your hospital um, and also ran the health informatics function as well. So that's essentially what I do. Um, we are, the, the hospital authority is a uh, large uh, healthcare organization, uh, 43 hospitals. We essentially provide 90% of healthcare in Hong Kong. Um, uh, there's a small private sector as well. And we're one single organization. You can see the, some of the stats here. Um, uh, now we, uh, are, because we're one organization, there's one IT function, which, which I run. And we decided years ago, oh, so, okay, 90% of hospital care. And um, we decided years ago that we wanted to get into this uh, health informatics field, but we really didn't have enough money to go out and buy a large system from anybody. So we decided we'd build it ourselves. And that's sort of where I came in in the early 90s. Um, and so we start, I started building a system called the CMS, uh, you know, learning from everything I read um, from, you know, the informatics field in the US basically. Um, and so over the years, we, we built up the system, we built up a team. So, uh, uh, you know, the informatics team started with me, but then I, I started uh, building up the team with uh, nurses and doctors and other people from the hospital authority coming into my team. Uh, we built up a large IT team to, to develop the system, run the system. And you can see here this sort of, you know, a lot of, lot of acronyms here, but essentially now we have this system throughout, uh, one, one single system throughout the whole of HA, um, so that no matter where a patient receives their care, uh, you know, there's one unified record, uh, you know, the, the whole record is there and all the functions are common across the system. It's, it's you know, there's one build that's being deployed across, across the whole, of Hong Kong. Um, actually, I just wanted to just point out one thing from that um, previous timeline. Um, yeah. So you see, in two thousand and three, um, we had we had SARS, um, and then we built up a system uh, to manage SARS in two thousand and three. Now, in twenty twenty, we didn't build up something similar for um, COVID, even though COVID is a much bigger deal. And the reason is is because basically the experience we've had with with all of our uh, system and the SARS experience meant that the system we have today was just able to deal with with uh, COVID with you know just some additional um, tweaks and a few extra forms that sort of thing. Um, everything is already in place, um, and that just for me it just highlighted having enough of this digital um, electronic footprint across the board meant we're able to deal with such major disruptions as SARS uh, um, almost in our stride, I would say. But I'm actually gonna to talk today more about how we've gone about doing this rather than what, what we've built. Um, and to, because to me, that, that's more the interesting story. So what, I mean, because we've had a continu continuity of development over all these years, we've been able to focus on the important things um, and hold that focus. So for us, the important things, okay, the electronic patient record, that, that's the key thing, of, you know, this is what we're, we're, we're dealing with patient records, patient care over their lifetime. How do you build that up so that it's you know in a structured way um, that it's comprehensive, accessible, and so forth? Um, now the key, the, apart from documentation, it's it's a system built to support care. So that's always been our focus. How do we support the processes of care? Um, and you know part of that, of course, is how our our clinicians, doctors and nurses, and everybody else you use the system, and can it be workflow enhancing? So a big part of that is is data uh, capture, of course. 
So that's been sort of this intense focus over the last 25 years. How do I make sure that this system is usable um, and in fact preferable to the to the old manual workflows they used to have? Um, and you know, we found that we can do that, but you have to, it has to be the intense focus of your system above everything else because it is not it is not easy to achieve. And then, you know, but at the same time, we want to achieve all the other great things about um, um, health pneumatics and can you improve quality and safety and so forth. And that's sort of building in the, the things behind the scenes that you can measure what's going on. You can build in, you know, improvement uh, tools and so forth. Uh, so that, that's how we were going for the first, you know, 15 or so years of this journey. But now, now we've sort of, the, the, there's the next level. And, I, you know, this really aligns with what everybody's all around the world is doing is that talking about using these uh, tools to enable new models of delivery, uh, you know, make the system data driven and to engage patients in their own care. So those are the sort of been more the more recent focus areas in our whole informatics uh, work. So um, I suppose you, everybody knows about this book. Um, I've sort of been thinking about this for a long, long time about how to inculcate a, you know, a pattern of behavior amongst our team that makes us effective uh, informa informatics, uh, informatics team. Um, and so I sort of had this philosophy that I've built up uh, based on seven, seven principles of informatics. Now, these are, these are the, you know, they're just, they're just slogans, you could say, um, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I don't have time for that, but I do want to pick up one or two, which I think are, are more salient. And this is perhaps the most, the most important one. Now, because, and this is a luxury I know most of you don't have because you know because we own the whole system and the uh, you know I work hand in hand with the actual end users to, when I develop the system uh, now this is just a, a, a picture of, of the sort of the core group that that runs our um, that runs our system development um, and most of these people are, are you know clinicians from throughout the HA um, of all various levels and and specialties and forth, so forth um, but this is just the tip of the iceberg because what we have, what we've built up is this very large engagement um, structure. Um, and you can see there uh, at any given time, we have you know, this many uh, people involved. Uh, but you know, there's a large representation. We have lots of uh, uh, front, front line and management type people uh, of all different stripes in all of these various working groups. And they actually you know, design, uh, develop, uh, implement, fine tune, maintain, operate the system. Uh, with us, um, and that's been running for uh, you know 20, 20 odd years, as I said. Um, and it's actually part of an overall uh, much larger governance structure. It's part of the whole governance structure of the hospital authority. So this is this is you know the the IT the way the IT works. But you see at the very top there, we go all the way uh, to the board. There's a board level committee that oversees all of the IT uh, decisions. Um, there's the executive committee in the middle. Where all major things are looked at from you know from from the, all the executives and all all of our uh, hospital heads are also there and then down below I have the uh, the IT committees and in fact the group I showed you there actually is way down here even though it's, it is uh, you know a fairly high powered group in terms of the uh, clinician brain power that we have but the the thing is um, I've I've spent sort of the last twenty you know 25, 30 years defending the system from the predations of uh, those who would make it more burdensome, I would say. That's sort of a fair thing to say, because when I talk to my peers in, in the management suite, uh, you know, they want more stuff uh, and, you know, they'd like to get it from our system. And I say, well, if it's in the system already, then we can give it to you or we can sort of mash it up for you somehow. But if you want people to enter stuff for you, uh, we're not gonna do it. And I hold that, I've been holding that line for 25, 30 years. I, mean, I don't always succeed, but I, it, because it's, a, it's the first question I ask, is it something that's gonna help the clinician during their delivery of care, or is it something that's just gonna become a burden? Um, and you know, that's the sort of thing I've been telling my people that this is one of the key issues we have to decide. And of course, because we work with the frontline people uh, uh, in all aspects of design, um, this problem becomes something that of course, you know, they're aware of something is useful to them or not. And if it's not useful, they'll tell us, and we will try and take it out as much as possible. So, uh, so that sort of having that engagement, and it's real engagement because they, they, you know, they have, they have the power to say yes or no to everything. Um, thing is, of course, doing things uh, in a very sort of 
um, iterative way. Now, this is this is how we've done it from day one. And so this is agile before the word uh, applied to computer uh, development, system development. And you know, just it's just an iterative thing. But I think the key thing is that little yellow loop. Um, I back in the day I called it acculturating informatics into the clinical teams. But basically, it just means that we build something, we try it in, we put it in production, try it out, and have a very tight, tight feedback loop. And when it seems to be good enough at that, for, you know, that that little MVP level, then we then we roll it out, and then we keep on going on, on a bigger cycle. So that's sort of like one of the key principles. This very iterative approach. Um, and the last one I want to focus on is, is the actual data itself, how it flows through the system. And, um, you know, this is, a, you know, a, a something we decided early on that, that, you know, if the system is useful, people will use it and enter good data. If the data in the system is good, then they will find the system useful and they will continue. It's sort of this virtual cycle, you know, good system, good data, good data, good system stripping, and uh, high utilization, good data, you know. And so the idea, I mean, it's a very simple idea, is that everything we collect at the front end, which is the top here, is uh, for the purpose of clinical care delivery. It flows through into the electronic unified electronic record. And then from there, it flows into the, into the warehouse to do all the other you know, management type of stuff. Um, and like I said, if we collect it, you can use it for your, your warehouse. If, if it's not, if it's something, you want something else um, you know, as a management or financial thing, whatever it is, uh, we're going to try and you find, get it some other way because the clinicians are not going to be asked to do it for you. Um, and, you, know, this is slow you have one more minute. Oh, okay. All right. So management data should be a byproduct of clinical documentation. So, yeah, I'm sort of at the time, so I'm going to have to skip some of these stuff that I'm really like to talk about, but it's just too detailed. So I'm going to skip it. But sort of like how, how we do this, get the data to flow through, um, so that you know everything people enter only needs to be entered once and then flows through. Now we are doing a sort of what we're doing now is we're, we're you know continuing to build the system um, and uh, just we're we're going to the next generation of development here and you know this is sort of like doing all the good stuff that everybody's doing about closing loops and protocols and uh, you know personalized stuff. The smart hospital is a big area. A lot of this is more to do with uh, automation and stuff, but. We, um, we are doing, uh, uh, we're all getting into the AI um, scenario uh, in a fairly big way because we think it's so important. Um, we built up a lab where we can do the, all the model building because we have so much data that we can do all this uh, uh, work on. But then we throw it across into the delivery center where we use the same principles that this system has to help clinical uh, workflow and clinical decision-making, otherwise it just doesn't get, doesn't get deployed. Um, you know, overall, we're working with the government, um, and um, you know, there's a there's an electronic record sharing with the private sector as well, and this becomes part of a whole e health ecosystem. But let me just close it off, um, uh, you know, with this. I mean, okay, so that's a very trite sort of homily with great power comes great responsibility. But I mean, in my case, because we do we do develop the system, we have the power to control uh, everything that gets put before the computer or before the clinicians. Um, now, so the, the, the tools are powerful. We can do anything, really, but it's it's really up to us to to focus on uh, how that improves the experience of the clinician. Um, and now, um, more and more, uh, focusing on the patient as well. But um, but of course, because we own the system, we can do that. But um, just uh, you know, that's sort of my presentation. Yeah, thanks a lot.